Hello again, everybody. This is the In My Grow Show, the podcast dedicated to taking the mystery out of cannabis. Once again, I'm Alex Robles. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me talk today. It's a beautifully warm day in July out here. Ooh, let me turn down that music a little bit. Like I was saying, it's nice and warm out here today. Sun's out. It's not so much that it's warm, but that it's humid. Even with the AC on, I'm still kind of feeling it. That's all right. At least it's not 105 like it was, what, last week? Last week was brutal. I'm just spaced out right now, man. That fucking pot got me high. Well, let's talk about it. So I might be a little scattered today. I just smoked a bowl of some Casey Jones, which is the strain of the week, by the way. And it's a great sativa, but I'm a little too high to be on the mic. I gotta wait till you know I kind of level out, get stoned a little. Then it should be okay. So speaking of Casey Jones, it is a cross of an Oriental Express, which is in itself a cross of train wreck and some Thai, and the East Coast Sour Diesel. It's got an okay flavor, a little earthy. Um, it doesn't have much bag appeal, though. You know, it doesn't... You know, it looks like mids. But, oh, man, did that get me high, though. Whew. Okay. Like I was saying, it's got a little earthy taste to it. It's a great sativa for me, because it really does keep me up and keep me going. And it doesn't give me cotton mouth so much, which is also a good thing while I'm talking. Because sometimes I'll be on here and just licking my lip. Oh, well, yeah, and like I was saying, you know, it's got, it doesn't look too good. You know, if you're looking at it, it's not all frosty, but woo, damn, did it get me high. Yeah, man, Casey Jones. That was a good choice. Okay. A little social media announcements. Um, out here in California, the latest version of California's cannabis regulations have been released for public comment until August 27th. So that means you can have your say about what you think about the new regulations. Okay, if you don't like the way they're going, get involved, go find out what they're talking about, and then send them your opinion. This is the time to be heard. A few of the things to talk about is allowing licensed cannabis businesses to make deliveries in every county or every municipality because that's what we as the people voted on. We're adults. We should be able to have access for it. Another thing they're talking about is increasing the THC limits on edibles that can be dissolved in the mouth. For example, sublinguals. To 500 milligrams per package for medical patients only. Like I was saying, those are just a couple of things that are in there you can voice your opinion on. Go over there, get informed, And they got this information from the Sespe Creek Collective Newsletter. Thank you to everybody over there for the information. Something else I want to talk about is I live up here in Ojai, and someone is putting together WeedCon, which is just that, a weed convention. That's happening October 26th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. But the real interesting thing to me is that during WeedCon, they're gonna have a weed cup let's see it says here weed con is hosting the first inaugural weed cup competition inviting the best in the biz to present their flower strands strands (laughs) strands and oils in front of a celebrity judge panel Enter your products and gain the bragging rights your brand can use for years. Huh. And then you go down to celebrity judges. They've only got one so far, and that's Ed Cherney. Isn't Ed Cherney a musician? Can I be a judge? I'm kind of popular. Yeah, I wonder what do you need to be a judge? Huh, who knows? Um, If anyone's associated with WeedCon or this Weed Cup, Get a hold of me. I have questions. You can find me at inmygrow at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at inmygrow. Or you can go to my website, inmygrow.com. 
But yeah, get a hold of me. And that's it for the social media. What else? So I want to talk a little bit about using cannabis oil to medicate. I was talking to a guy a couple of days ago, and he was telling me how he smokes cannabis because he's got some, you know, some pain issues, some neck issues. But that his kids are getting older and his wife's, you know, starting to kind of get on him about the smoke. And, you know, the kids are starting to ask what that funny smell is. You know, so, and I was giving him a couple of tips on how he could take it discreetly. You know, one was with a, a vape pen. It's probably the easiest. Just because the, the smoke goes away or dissipates so quickly. It doesn't linger. You don't have to really smoke a joint. You don't, your hands aren't going to smell. So that was one option for him. Another thing I suggested was taking a cannabis oil. And if he's taking it for pain, I was telling him to get a ratio of at least one to one. You know, you want one CBD molecule to one THC molecule. Because it, once again, they work together to prolong the positive effects of the medicine. But I also told him that at a one to one ratio, since you have one molecule of THC and one molecule of CBD, while the CBD does work to kind of lessen or dampen the high feeling of THC. THC is still strong enough to kind of push its way through. You're still going to feel a little euphoric. You're still going to feel a little high. So I suggested to him if he doesn't want to feel high, that he should get a ratio above 1 to 1, either a 4 to 1, a 6 to 1, an 18 to 1, so that while you're still getting the positive effects of the compounds working together, there's enough CBD that's going to totally take away the intoxicated feelings that THC may show up with, that THC may give you. And once again, these are just a couple of discrete ways that people can take cannabis without rolling a joint or having to smoke a bowl. And don't forget, if you're new to that type of cannabis, a little bit goes a long way. Start real small. So you know until you know what the, how it's going to affect you. And if anybody else has any other questions, just get a hold of me and we'll talk about it. All right, so now the report from the Cannabis Front Line. So last time on the report, I talked about a study that was done where in states that had legal cannabis, more crimes were cleared off the docket or more charges were brought for, cl- for crimes that were reported. And I, you know, I kind of really didn't understand what they were talking about, so I had to go in there. and I, So I went over to Police Quarterly, and I read the abstract, which is the summary, I didn't read the whole report because they wanted to charge me 36 bucks to read the report. That kind of offended me. I think if somebody had a report and put that together, I think that should be free information for everybody to read and use. But the abstract helped, helped me understand it a little better. And basically what they were saying is that in those states where cannabis is legalized, cops have more time to give towards property crimes or violent crimes. So in that sense, Cannabis legalization has worked out in a positive way for public safety. Next is another study coming out of Colorado, which is titled Youth Marijuana Use Unchanged Post-Legalization. And it says, Department of Public Health and Environmental State Survey data finds that the percentage of teens acknowledging use of cannabis in 2017 was 19%, down 1% from 2013. Colorado voters passed legalization in November 2012. Retail sales of cannabis began on January 1, 2014. The study also went on to say that the percentage of Colorado youth using cannabis is consistent with the national average. By contrast, self-reported marijuana use by adults has increased slightly, driven largely by an increase in consumption by younger adults. Keyword there is younger adults. Okay, young people older than 21, they're still young adults. It also says the data is consistent with prior studies finding that neither the the enactment of medical cannabis legalization nor the enactment of adult use regulations is independently associated with increased marijuana use by young people, which means that by itself, the passage of these laws don't cause young people to smoke more cannabis or to use more cannabis. Okay, and here's another study that came out of Boston. It says the majority of oncologists believe that the use of medical cannabis is either as effective or more effective than conventional treatment for managing symptoms of cancer. 
And this was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Okay, it says a team of investigators surveyed oncologists and 65% of respondents said that medical marijuana was equally effective or more effective than standard treatments for addressing appetite loss and cachexia. Now, I had to look up what cachexia meant. And it is weakness and wasting of the body due to severe chronic illness. The report also said a majority of respondents also believed that cannabis was safe and effective in the treatment of anxiety and pain. Half of the respondents said that cannabis was as effective or more effective than controversial medications in treating nausea, and 70% viewed marijuana as equally safe or safer than opioids. But we knew that. The survey also reported that some 80% of oncologists had engaged in discussions with patients about the use of cannabis. Although in over half of those instances, it was either patients or families rather than oncologists themselves who promoted the, who prompted the conversation. And that came out in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Well, I've been telling friends of mine, those who have cancer, that while I'm not sure if cannabis will help fight their particular cancer, I know at the very least it'll give them some symptom relief, either with their appetite, it'll help them have an appetite. Or sometimes when you're having cancer treatment, some patients will lose some of their senses, like their sense of smell and their sense of taste. And some friends of mine have said that cannabis helped them regain those senses. And they were using a cannabis oil. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to get some water, refresh my throat. I will be back to talk about sulfur deficiency. Hang tight. Tout fait trop loin de mon doigt. J'oublie un peu plus à chaque fois. Combien c'est chaud, combien c'est doux. Serré dans le fond de tes bras. Mon petit bébé, je suis fatigué. Avant que le froid ne m'attrape. Avant que les grands froids d'hiver. Avant que l'amour ne s'échappe. Car au chez ma peau de mes faux. Mon sac à clous, puis mon marteau. Quand on chez nous, j'en ai ma claque. Pour prendre le train pour pas ce qu'il y a. All right, I'm back, adequately refreshed. I'm feeling a little warm though, so because I had to turn off the air conditioner and the fan. I don't know if I've talked about this before. If I don't turn it off, it sounds like I'm recording underneath the freeway. So in order not to have that, I have to sweat it out a little bit. So sulfur deficiencies, let's see. The science tells us that the plant's gonna need sulfur to help make the hormones and the amino acids. The plant's gonna also use the sulfur to make the oils give it the terpenes and the flavors. It helps with transpiration or, or, or respiration, the way a plant breathes and sweats. Don't forget also sulfur is immobile, which means that if you're going to have a deficiency, you're going to see it at the new growth first. Because if it's not getting it from the soil or from whatever we're feeding it, it's not going to get it from anywhere else. Okay, Some of the symptoms of sulfur deficiency are going to be, of course, stunted growth. On the leaf, the leaf stem is going to turn purple. Is going to turn purple, and it's also going to have intervenal yellowing, which means it's going to start to yellow in between the veins. The leaf tips themselves are going to start to curl or claw downward. Of course, since it stunts the growth, if it happens in flower, your buds are going to be a lot smaller. You know, a, a few things that are going to cause this is first of all pH. Check your pH. I don't go anything over 6.5, 6.6. I don't go anything under 5.5, 5.4. I keep it in that range. I don't keep it exact. Okay, it's just better for the plant when you keep it in the range and not exact because other nutrients work better at certain pHs also. So just remember that. Another thing that'll make the plant struggle that take up sulfur is if I leave the soil too wet. So I'm going to first, you know, I'm also going to dry out, let the soil dry out completely. After the soil dries out, since I usually grow in a container, I'm going to flush the plant, which means I'm going to run a bunch of water through it. 
I want to see as much water come out of the container as the size of the container. So if I'm growing in a five gallon container, I want to see at least five gallons of runoff at the bottom, more or less. Now I do that in case there's any potassium or magnesium buildup that's going to lock out the sulfur. Okay, so once I flush it, I'll give it a nice even feeding because I don't want to starve the plant also. I want to make sure the plant has some nutrients that it's going to keep growing and moving forward in a positive way. Um, another thing I'm going to do is also, I'm going to foliar feed it an Epsom salt spray because an Epsom salt will also help with that sulfur deficiency. And I'll also add some worm castings to the soil just to help introduce more microbes and worm castings. I just love adding worm castings as an additive because it really helps with a lot of nutrients and micronutrients that a, that a cannabis plant needs. And those are just some advice that I have for spotting sulfur deficiencies. If you have any questions, you can email me at inmygrow at gmail.com or you can also find me really easy on Instagram at inmygrow. Well, well, look, after a rough start, I got to tell you, man, made it to the end. That's all I have to talk about today. And that was a lot of fun. Ooh, there's a reason why I don't get on the mic super high. Anyways, uh, let's see. If you want to support the show financially, you can go to patreon.com, find the In My Grow Show, and donate to the show that way. That Patreon account I use to pay my hosting fees, pay for equipment, and help me make videos. Another way you can help support the show, the new t-shirts for the In My Grow Show are out. You can go to inmygrow.com to see them. They're pretty awesome. I like them. I mean, I designed them myself. It is the seed logo, and then it says Cannabis Saves Lives. On the back, it has the show slogan, which is Grow, Learn, Teach, and a really cool uh, 3D effect. At the bottom, it just says inmygrow.com. So go over there, check it out. Check it out and help support the show. If you can't support the show financially, I get it. Don't worry about it. But do me one favor. Tell three other people about the show. That's it. Real simple. All right, brothers and sisters. I hope everybody has a lovely day. And thank you for showing up. I appreciate the hell out of it. Don't forget to be cool to each other and to always grow, learn, and teach. <laughs>